Okay, go for it. Okay, um, when I was uh, young, I was uh, raised on a farm, and uh, we had chicken houses, and uh, we had a chicken house at home that uh, the, for the hens to lay eggs. But you know, they uh, had roosts inside, and the roosts were, uh, had to be cleaned, the ground has to be cleaned once in a while. Irving was in there cleaning, and he had hooked up the roost uh, on this uh, wire. And he was shoveling in, shoveling that uh, goop out of there. And, and uh, then my dad and I was out in the yard, we all were in the yard, and all of a sudden he said, I haven't seen Irving shovel for a while. He said, run over there and see what's wrong. And, and I ran over there and I yelled back, Irving's down on the floor he, and the roosts are laying on top of him because he had gone up too far and he had unhooked that up there. Mm -hmm. And so then there we were, Dad couldn't wake him up and, and uh, he was a mess. And so Dad, uh, my, he told my brother, go get the wheelbarrow. And he told me to go get that board uh, back of the garage and I did and in the one side of the wheelbarrow, the front side, Dad put the board, and then they all lifted him into the wheelbarrow, and we got him up to the porch. And then they had to uh, take off those clothes because the, uh, the, they were dirty from the goop of the, the, the hens, you know. And, and so they took off his clothes, and then Mother and my brother and my dad, I, they didn't ask me for any help because I wasn't very strong yet, and they took him into the uh, house, and, and the, while mother was washing him off in the in the hall in the porch, uh, they Francis and my dad took the bed from the bedroom and put into the dining room. The dining room table went into the living room. That's what he always did if someone was ill. But, but, and so they managed to lift him up and, and drag him, and and they put him in that bed. The, it, his head was along those south windows. There were three south windows there. And uh, Dad says, we don't dare lay him down because he, he'll swallow his tongue. So he sat up and it, it, he put a pillow behind him and he took that board that was on, that they had for the wheelbarrow behind him. So he sat up there and, and he was propped up with pillows and and um, he, he uh, there was no way they s s could Dad thought maybe he'd come back, but he, he was out. He was out of it. Just, but, and so that went on for two days. But Dad would take mother made soup. Dad would take um, the soup. He'd strain it several times. And then he would put it between his uh, cheek and the teeth. And he'd go like this. And apparently he managed to absorb enough that he got a little nourishment that way. Finally, we were going into the third evening. And uh, Thea and Clara and Kelmer, they were all unmarried. They were my uncle and uh, two aunts, my dad's uh, relatives. And uh, they said, we're coming over tomorrow evening and we're going to pray all night over him. And so they did. They came after supper time and we were all praying around. And everybody prayed and, and uh, we were all on our knees around Irving and and all of a sudden, Dad got up. It was probably around 7.30. And he said, you know, in the paper today, I saw an advertisement by a chiropractor. And, you know, he said, maybe that's what Irving needs. Uh, and, uh, he, and he said uh, uh, he was open till 8 o'clock. And he said, it's about 7.30. So he called him on the phone and asked if it told him the situation. said, would you make a phone call, uh, a, 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 a house call? man says, I will. He says, I get off at 8. And uh, he says, where do you live? And, and he said, down on 18. Do you know where 18 is south of uh, Sioux Falls? Yeah. And he said, you turn west. And he said, keep going west till you, I'll put a lantern out by the, we didn't have electricity yet. I'll put a lantern out by the driveway so you'll know. And I'll put another one by the house, he said. And it was uh, probably around 9 o'clock the man came. And he came in and he looked at him and he checked him out and he said, my goodness, that must have been a something heavy that hit him in the head. And my dad said, well, it was Ruth, you know, that was heavy. And he simply, he was a tall man and he had big hands. I'll always remember that. And he just took him out on either side of the skull 
and he lifted it up and we all heard a pink. It, it slid right back in place. Mm -hmm. And Irving says, what's everybody doing here? And he was able to talk immediately. And uh, it, it was unbelievable. We just couldn't hardly believe it, you know, because he had been out so long. And then, of course, he went to Sioux Falls, uh, I don't know, a couple times a week for chiropractic adjustments for a while. And uh, that was the first uh, I saw a miracle happen through chiropractic. And what was the chiropractor's name? Do you remember? You could ask me that, yes. But I always did know it. Uh, what, what, hmm. Now, had, how long had he been um, out unconscious? About three days. Wow. Just on that. He was just eating you know, on, the, on, the, on those things. Um, we, I just about hit Dr. It wasn't Dr. Vollen. He was he. he Dr. Vollen had already. There was a medical doctor that said that he said he said he's gone. He's a goner. Nothing can be done for him. And uh, but the chiropractor did made a big impression on my brain. In my brain. Uh, oh, I just about hit it. Uh, this got terrible. I can't remember. Well, his son Sweetert. That was his name, Dr. Sweetert. And he was from Sioux Falls. He was from Sioux Falls. Okay. Yeah. And how old were you at this time? Well, if Irving was about 14, I suppose I was uh, nine. Okay. Something like that. So did you decide right there that you wanted to be a chiropractor? Well, I certainly was impressed, I'll tell you. I never thought about what I wanted to be later. I, I was pretty young for to decide with that. But I was, uh, and of course we were on our knees praying and, and uh, Dad just said, it, I, I, I saw it in the paper. Yeah. And I... And he, the man was willing to come out. I knew the man later on. I, I knew who he was. Yeah. And I did tell him that I was, uh, if he remembered that when I first met him. I, again, it, it, when we went to uh, conventions, you know, he said, yes, he remembered that. Mm -hmm. He remembered that very well. So what did everybody else, what was everybody else's reaction when, when he adjusted Irving and Irving miraculously woke up from the adjustment? Well, the Thea and Claire and Kelmer thought it was a miracle. That's what they... And no one had ever seen chiropractic before yet, right? Well, they hadn't, but uh, yes, we, our family had. We we had gone to. Uh, it was a sleigh that would come. See, my grandpa and grandma were in, lived in town then, you know, off the farm, and they knew a chiropractor in Canton, mm -hmm. and he wanted to come over into Lenox uh, once a week, and he came to my grandparents' living room, mm -hmm. and he took care of his patients there in that. And incidentally, that Slade, we have a lady here called uh, Vaughn, and her last name is Slade. And I asked her if she was related to the Slade that was in Canton Compound. She said, yes, she, that was her uh, husband's father. Oh, interesting. Isn't that straight? Yeah. <laughs> Years yeah. later, you run into this. Mm -hmm. And that was the, and, uh, oh, it took, I'd say, Ir Dad didn't let Irving do heavy work after that, you know, uh, for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, so that that was uh, that story. Oh. Mm -hmm. So they knew enough about health and medicine to be able to take care of him in those three days. Yeah, well, it was really remarkable. I thought that uh, way uh, they uh, took the soup and strained it, and it it I I uh, it's kind of remarkable that it absorbed through his cheek yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. Just put a little there, and he'd rub it like this, mm -hmm. because he couldn't swallow. I mean, uh, it it, uh, it was tricky that way. Water too. I don't know how in the world he got enough water either. He, I guess he just put a few drops down there, and that was good thinking. And he was still breathing. Yeah, he, yeah, oh yeah, he was breathing okay. It's just yeah. the fact that he was out. Yeah. And it, and that was because his his skull was just see um off. I mean, it, it 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 hit him like this. I don't know how it was off, but the, the guy did like this to lift it, and we heard it bump right back in place. So it, it was a miracle to me. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, and my, and like I say, my grandpa and grandma were very chiropractic minded. Uh, they had this slate come uh, every Saturday afternoon to Lenox, and and he would be there. Of course, you know, uh, their their daughter became a chiropractor too. Miss Sylvia was a chiropractor, you know. Now, when did she become a chiropractor? I uh, well, when she she went to, I think when she got uh, 
through with high school or whatever they had. I don't know. Did oh. she go to national too? No, no, no. She went to, uh, I think Missouri was the only place around. Oh, okay. That, that, that they knew about at that time. Was it Palmer? Because that was the original one in Iowa. Yeah. Davenport? Well, she didn't go to Palmer. She okay. went to Missouri because Palmer is just strictly neck. And you want to work on the whole body in, in, in Missouri. She was Sylvia. She was the yeah. one that wasn't always, I mean, uh, she had a horrible husband. I don't know how she ever, he was a, he was a lawyer. He was a typical lawyer. <laughs> Crooked lawyer. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. But, but uh, well, tell, tell me more about now uh, Ivor and Lena, and tell me some of the healing practices or the traditions that um, they would for to help people with health. Like Lena, you said delivered babies. Well, and... yes, Dr. Vaughn and Lennox would, uh, I, I don't know how come my mother, my grandmother had such a oh, feeling for ill people. She just seemed to have an aura. And... Uh, and and she frequently was there when uh, the doctor Vaughn would come because these ladies had so much confidence in her ability you know a lot of women wouldn't look at another woman or anything you know what I mean she didn't mind being with people that were naked and stuff let's say that you know and sick she disliked to help people sick she had a gift I guess you'd call it and and uh, so a lot of ladies would call her up if they had trouble you know, before they had the babies, they wanted her. And she did bo help bo born a lot of babies in that area. Uh, Helmer Hansen, he was uh, in our church. And he had an extra big head. And and a doctor called my grandmother and said, would, would you walk over? That was just across the section. I mean, she just had to walk across the field. And and uh, he said, because he said, uh, he's got, that baby's got a big head. And... and uh, now I went over there and she helped. Don't ask me which, how she helped, but she helped. You know, and then afterwards she'd go there because of course they got ripped and tore or they were cut or whatever to get the baby out. And I, I always remembered Helmer Hansen as uh, having an extra big head. <laughs> he grew to be to six foot, but I always, whenever I saw him, I thought of him as a baby coming out. <laughs> And Grandma said it was uh, it was tough. To... So Lena Lena helped deliver babies kind of in the community for yeah, her whole did. life. Yeah, she of? did uh, because mm -hmm, cause her 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 mother helped, and my mother didn't have any school much schooling, but she was willing to go out and help them birth babies. You know, so most babies just pop right out. Let's face it, you know, but but she she knew how to work with them and 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 so forth. Yeah, my mother would help, now my mother helped the lady across the road. Their name was Junkie, and this was their first girl. Incidentally, they had five girls, and he came from an all-boy family. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but then Vaughn, he, he, uh, he, their oldest daughter then was going to be born, and they called uh, Dr. Vaughn, and he came down, and uh, he called, made a phone call immediately to my mother. He said, can you come over? He says, I need some help here. He says, I, I just can't handle this. Well, when he came, mother says, we, there's this, base, this bedroom is so small, we can't even get around here. We got to take this bed and put it in the living room. So they, and then it was a small house. So they take some of that furniture and they put it in the bedroom so they could work around. Mother said it was terrible, you couldn't get, get around. And so Mother boiled water, you know, and different things like that, and and, uh, and he did that, that was Virginia. The, the oldest the oldest was uh, Virginia, and they had five daughters hmm. but by the time they had finished with that. And uh, I will always uh, remember that. Oh, Whenever no, I, I guess we can't do that. It takes all the light away. Well, turn them up the other way. Turn it up. There, there. Is that better? Is no, that that's enough? still dark. Here, I'm going to stop this for a second.